take on some garden maintenance that will ensure your garden keeps flourishing. Tasks around the garden, especially when it comes to roses, are always needing to be done. And I have a very interesting shoot here, which some of you might have come across. Now, this is not what we call a water shoot or a root stock. A root stock on a rose is very different. Its foliage looks completely different to the normal rose. It's normally paler in color, a bit more loose, and sometimes its branches even arch. That's because whatever rose you have was originally grafted onto the rootstock of the old wild rose. All right, so if you have to leave that and just leave it to its own device as well, it's really strong, so it'll overpower the rose and eventually kill the main rose that you have. However, this shoot is very different. This is what we call a basal shoot. And if you get these, you must be very excited because a basal shoot arrives literally from below the ground, unlike the others, which shoot just above the ground. So this is really showing that the plant is growing, it's digging down, it means its roots are healthy, and it's sending up one of these important basal shoots. And you'll see the vigor. I mean, same plant, one branch. So a basal shoot, because it comes from below ground, has an enormous amount of energy. However, what we want to do is bring it into check so that it can balance out the rows and not like, kind of shoot off into Mars. You know, it does look a bit off balance. So we want to check its growth, bring it back, which will then encourage some side shoots, plus, most importantly, will then encourage flowering. So keep an eye out for basal shoots. When it comes to companions for roses, there really are so, so many choices. So today, really, I want to give you just a couple of tough, really non-fussy individuals that will do incredibly well in a rose garden as companion planting. So the most important thing we need to remember is, do they like the same conditions as the rose? Yeah, because our roses are in full sun. Uh, roses are quite greedy feeders. And we need to make sure that we can also get in there. We've also got to consider the height of the companions that we choose so that they don't overpower the roses. So here are some top plants, which I would suggest putting in amongst your roses. Number one, Agapanthus blackjack. Well, folks, we know it took the world by storm, winning the best flower plant new introduction at the RHS Chelsea Flower Show in London. Bred here in South Africa, one of our hybrids, and it is truly amazing, like pom-poms, that dark, dark maroon, almost black, and a really strong plant, insanely amazing in the garden, and it really does just pop. And for that matter of fact, any agapanthus, whether it's the large growing variety or even some of the dwarfs. Hebes are another firm favorite. They love hot, dry climates, so Western Cape summers, Gauteng summers, perfect. They don't get very big, come in many different colors from whites to pinks to purples, really great in the garden. Of course there are lavenders. Now what is a rose garden without a lavender? Many to choose from, which one to pick? For me, Margaret Roberts does the trick. Simple, easy, so many uses, not only in the garden, for posies, for just for fragrance, and they just are non-stop flowers. Daisy bushes to pop in between for a bit of summer color, winter color, do the job. Do not overlook them. They might be as common as mud, but a beautiful double dwarf, low growing, compact daisy bush, just nothing really beats it. This little guy over here is Chrysanthemum pallidosum. Incredible plant, guys, and certainly in the drier regions, it is amazing. We've got a few in the rose garden here that we literally just pop in from time to time. One or two punnets fill a gap because this little guy is going to get about 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters and as tough as nails and will go on in the garden for at least six to seven months. Of course, whenever you're planting, please do make sure that you are putting in 
loads of compost into the planting hole because it's the only chance that we get. And while you're at it, use a good quality compost. Once planted, give it a light feeding, some organic or purpose fertilizer, and a good watering, and you're on your way.